And God's church is not simply comprised of Seventh Adventism. It's comprised of Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Buddhists, Voodoo, or witchcraft people. Yes, some will be converted. Um, Hindu and whatever else that are out there. Methodists, you name it. The the people that will receive or will, will, will respond to Jesus Christ's call in the last day, those are the people that will be the Church of Christ. It's not the building or the conferences or the union, n none of that. Hello friends, in my previous video, we talked about the, the issues facing the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And today we're going to talk about the potential splitting of the church. We've seen churches like United Methodist split, Baptist Church split, some other of the evangelical churches splitting. So, I think it's coming for us now. Could this be the shifting happening? I don't know. But if it's your first time, hit the subscribe button below and that like button as well as, as, well as that notification bell. So you can build up when I post a new video. Now, uh, let's get to Dr. Vine because we got to talk about it. On the one side, there'll be Adventists who reject the GC Adcom's assumed authority over their conscience, who hold true to scripture and our fundamental beliefs, and who thus who reject the onrush of cultural Marxism and SDA institutions and among our leaders, professors, and pastors. And it's more widespread than we like to admit. Then there'll be Adventists who accept the GC Adcom's assumed authority over their individual conscience, neither afraid to contend for the faith, the faith passed on to us, as per Jude verse 3, or actually support the abandonment of Scripture in favor of cultural Marxism. And you'll notice there's a remarkable correlation between those who uphold the mandates and attack others who don't take the shots, and those who support critical race theory, critical gender theory, LGBTQ normalization within our church, etc. Let me pause right here, because this, um, unless you have not been paying attention, um, four years ago, when the virus came, and they said, in less than a year, they already brought a solution, the jab solution. And they said, people that said, well, I'm taking the I'm taking it because um I mean I got I got mouths to feed, I got kids, I got this, I got bills to pay, my car not to pay. And others would say, Well, I uh, I'm taking it because I believe that we have enough science to prove that it is a hundred percent accurate. And of course, as you watch all the um the data showing, I wondered if it is it really true it was spreading that fast, or are they popping up those numbers to make it seem like it is very much a big deal? Now I'm not saying it wasn't a big deal, but making it look like we had billions of people dying left and right. My question was, how certain were we? that those numbers were true and was it because of the the virus or was it other health issues that people already had and that one just came and then was the end of all so when i when i looked i realized most of the nations when i went to, to the data myself uh, because as a scientist, that's what you do. I found out most of the nations that had the most complications when it comes to the to that issue was the uh, the wealthy nations and the ones that had the most elderly people. Much of the younger generations were not affected like that. And so my question was, was did the did the job actually work? Or was it because people were already immune to it? My next thing was, people were saying, well, if I don't get it, I will lose my job. My thing is, I was just happy and very glad 
that God had put me in a position where my work didn't require me to take the vaccine. Um, I'm wondering what would I what would I have done if they had said if you don't take the vaccine, you get fired. What I did know is when I applied for new positions in the future and they said you had to be vaccinated, I said I am not taking those jobs. As soon as I saw he says you have to be 100 percent vaccinated, I said that's not for me. And of course, I realized it wasn't effective because you have to take a second dose and a third dose and a fourth and how I don't know how many more you have to take. So I'm thinking if it really worked, why would people have to take a second, third dose? I didn't think it was good. And of course, when the church came out and they said, yes, we support it. I was like, hmm, I didn't like that. And some people I actually knew didn't like the fact that many of the seven day churches closed their doors while the Sunday churches kept their doors open. I think that to me was a slap in the face. Let's keep on moving. There is a remarkable parallel between people who take one position and the other. So you might say, as I look at what's coming upon our church, that we're going to have to make a choice, each and every one of us. The church, when we talk about the church, we often mean the legal hierarchy, like the North New England Conference and the Atlantic Union, the North American Division, the General Conference. When we talk about the church as members, that's often what we mean. But the truth of the matter is, if the government of Maine were to cancel the registration, the legal registration of Northern New England Conference, does that mean the Adventist Church would cease to exist in Maine? Yes or no? Okay. no absolutely not. It means simply a functional unit that we, where we return our tithes and offerings to, to support pastors and, and educators and so forth. That no longer exists, but the body of Christ still exists. Mm -hmm. It simply becomes an underground church, which means it has no legal presence. So what I see happening as a result of the last four years... And this is so true. Let me pause. I'm going to pause right here. This is so true because most people think of the church as, you know, you have the local conference, the division, the, the, the conference, the divisions, the union, and then the GC. But in reality, the church is the people. People, the people are the church. It's not the hierarchy. That's the, no, we are the church. And God's church is not simply comprised of seven Adventism. It's comprised of Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, Buddhists, Voodoo, or witchcraft people. Yes, some will be converted. Um, Hindu and whatever else that are out there. Methodists, you name it. The, the people that will receive or will, will, will respond to Jesus Christ's call in the last day those are the people that will be the Church of Christ. It's not the building of the conferences or the union, none of that. Now, in most churches now, there is a split already. Baptists have a split. Methodists have a split when it comes to certain teachings that are totally, unequivocally um, against the Bible. And, I, and I, I, I think I made a video before I said, if you go to a church where they are not teaching the Bible, it doesn't mean you should leave the church itself, but you should leave that local church and go to a different church area. Go to a different body of people where they promote the Bible. But let's keep on going. And the onrush of cultural Marxism across our institutions is this, that we're going to have groups of faithful and convicted Adventists on the one side, and we're going to have institutional and cultural Adventists on the other side. They are, many of them are Adventists by convenience rather than by conviction. The Adventists on the left are... In and that already started. We already have that. It just hasn't been brought up in the forefront yet. Independent of federal funding, the Adventists on the right, particularly our institutions, are completely dependent on federal funding for their institutions to remain alive. My bad. I know I'm putting a lot. You know one thing I didn't like? 
the fact that Seventh Day Adventist churches are um, tax exempt. I, I hate that. Me personally, I don't like it. But I, it wasn't me. Let's, let's keep on going. The Adventists on the left, the faithful and convicted Adventists, they uphold liberty of conscience. The cultural or institutional Adventists feel free to trample on liberty of conscience whenever financially or socially expedient. Mm -hmm. The Adventists on the left, the faithful and convicted Adventists, will one day establish when the mark of the beast is imposed an underground network of lay-led house churches. That's what we're going to be before Jesus comes again. And that sounds just like the Dark Ages, the woman in the wilderness. Yes, we will go back to that time period, the woman in the wilderness. The Adventists on the right, the institutional Adventists, will remain in a visible network of conference-affiliated churches and conference-owned buildings. Mm -hmm. The Adventists on the left, the faithful Adventists, will be able to preach and live the everlasting gospel and Bible truth freely because they have no, no fear of loss of having their church taken away from them by the conference or the government. The institutional Adventists, they increasingly self-censor the preaching of Bible truths if they happen to rebuke cultural Marxism. We see this in Canada today, where pastors are self-censoring in the area of human sexuality and marriage. Pastors dare not preach out biblical truth in Canada today, even many Adventist pastors, because if they do, the church will face a lot of um, hostile attacks from the Canadian federal government. So it seems to me that in Canada, we should already be going to an underground church in order to live and preach gospel truth freely and openly. Let me say this. Um, now, you mentioned freely. I don't think it's actually going to be freely. Yes, you're going to be free from um, conferences, from maybe you lose your job, free from many things that you would like to have. But because of Christ's sake, you'd rather lose all of the, all these things and have Christ. And I think the free part is you are free in Christ, not the freedom we have in the nation right now because you won't be free in the nation because if anybody doesn't doesn't like what you're preaching they can always call the authority and get you in prison so you won't be free to to preach you can you can you can you can preach freely but it can also be at the expense of being fined at the expense of being prison and of course the last one which you already know Let's move on. We, we're on the left, we have faithful and convicted Adventists who reject the acceptance of LGBTQ ideology and the normalization of this lifestyle within our church, mm -hmm. the reposturing that some conferences want. Amen. And on the right, we have institutional Adventists who are increasingly accepting LGBTQ ideology and the normalization of this lifestyle. You might say they're no longer seventh Adventists, they are Sodomite Adventists. On the left hand, you've got the faithful Adventists. They're focused on bringing the everlasting gospel to every nation, tribe, language, and people. On the right, we have our institutional Adventists who are focused on the preservation of our institutions, of our retirement funds, of the visible hierarchy and administrative incomes. On the left, the faithful Adventists, they seek the eternal spiritual benefit of individual members and non-members, no matter the cost. And on the right, the institutional Adventists, they seek the temporal, that is the, the earthly financial survival of our hierarchy and our institutions, no matter the cost. Now, you may say, Pastor Wine, that's a very harsh division. But this is what I'm seeing happening around us. It may not be popular to say this, but this is what is happening. And in every one of our institutions that are supposed to be bastions of the Adventist faith, increasingly they are battlegrounds of the Adventist faith, where those who are upholding biblical truth are fighting a losing rearguard action against the onslaught of cultural Marxism within our institutions. This is the reality. And this is affecting pastors and educators across particularly the North American division. Mm -hmm. So this is how I see this is, this is where we may be going here in the North American division. It's very similar to the split that's taken place in the United Methodist Church, yeah. where you have the Bible Faithful Methodists have formed a new denomination, the Global Methodist uh, Conference that is affiliated with the Southern Hemisphere Methodists, and the, the remainder of the United Methodist Church in North America have now become essentially a woke ideological um, talking shop. 
and they'll probably go bankrupt in the next couple of years because their tithe base has collapsed. And so this is the, the, the pandemic merely revealed and exposed where each of our hearts are. I'm going to stop it right here. So, oh, man. I don't know what else I can say because, man, this is, this is spot on. Um, I know for sure. I don't, man. Should I should I say this, is this the time of the, the 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 sifting or the shifting? Is that, man? I forgot the word of it. But is that is? I know it's not the time of trouble, but is it the time when Sister White said there will be a sifting through the church? The church started to compromise on the things that God said. This is how it's supposed to be. And because it starts compromise on the smaller stuff, then as it becomes bigger, you're going to compromise as well. Please do not kill me for that. I'm just saying what the reality is. Um, but, nonetheless, I, I, I'm hoping we will not, I mean, we already did, in 2020 but i'm hoping we will take action and not do the same thing or the same mistake again so um hey don't forget again to hit that subscribe button below and that like button as well it was again to Brother tv hope to see you guys again until then bye for now